receipts and electricity receipts going back decades. The people of Corsaya don't own the land, but rather lease it from the state. Six years ago, the government refused to renew their leases and began moves to evict them. The Egyptian army claimed the land and took control of several parts of the island. A court confirmed the residents' right to remain on Kursaya, but before sunrise one day last November, the Egyptian army sent in troops officially to evict trespassers. Clashes ensued, one resident, a fisherman, was shot dead, and 25 others were arrested and are now awaiting trial. At a press conference in January, the Egyptian army insisted it had no intention of evicting anyone. Their only interest, Colonel Ahmed Ali told reporters, was to build moorings for boats to patrol the river and prepare these areas as part of the defense plan for the capital in the event of crises or tensions. Not everyone buys that. The army controls a vast commercial empire, including hotels, factories and agribusiness. Around Corsaya, it has banned fishermen from going out in their boats at night near its positions where the fishing is best. Like this, says fisherman Said Abbas, the army is stopping people from making a living. And Syed has seven mouths to feed. The only way to get onto Kursai is by a hand-pulled ferry for the equivalent of seven cents to cross a thin strip of the Nile. No roads here, only dirt paths, and unlike traffic-choked Cairo, there's not a car in sight. Um Khatib, busy cutting alfalfa, scorns the promise of a new Egypt and says the new rulers are as deaf to the poor as the old ones. What revolution, she asked dismissively. This revolution has done nothing for us. Khalid was born and raised on Kursaya and hopes his two daughters can grow up here. I'm happy with what I have, he says. As farmers, as fishermen, we don't want more than our daily bread. In Egypt, we say the sea always wants more. Those who have money don't need more but they like it. The slogan of the Egyptian revolution was bread, freedom, and social justice. But on this island, they're in danger of losing their bread, their livelihood. 25 people are behind bars. No sign of social justice here. As dusk approaches, residents cross the water back to their quiet island. Their island, but for how much longer? Ben Wiedemann, CNN, Kursaya Island. Egypt. Myanmar has received a lot of attention in recent months as its government opens the country to the international community, but the effects are not limited to politics. CNN senior international correspondent Dan Rivers introduces us to some young people who are pushing pop culture forward. They are sassy, outspoken and hip, and they're hoping to take Asia by storm. No, this isn't the latest Korean K-pop band. This is Myanmar Girls, a clever play on words with the name of their country, Myanmar, also known as Burma. We are Myanmar Girls! The five-piece girl band is just one facet of a youth revolution in this previously repressed country that's suddenly opening up to the West. Now there's no censorship. There's yeah. no censorship for the, uh, can I say, for the video clips. So we can... And, and, the and the lyrics. We had to show them our lyrics. And if there is political uh, lyrics, and which is not good, uh, which is about the government, we couldn't sing it. And, no. yeah, and the singer no, is banned, sing. and now we can sing. And the censorship didn't stop with the song words. Even their dresses were vetted. The short ones, low tops, and low singlet tops, and you just too sexy, and the color, colorful hair, the black lipsticks, yeah, no, no, we just too, what can I say, Western, or yeah, they, they think that this is alien culture. And the appetite for all things Western is insatiable. The internet is spreading, and it's changing young lives. This is a rehearsal for a modelling contest 
These young hopefuls have been plucked from obscurity in a country that has been pretty obscure itself. Since 1962, the military has run Myanmar, locking it in a cultural time warp, exacerbated by Western sanctions, which meant people here had little exposure to the outside world. But now the sanctions are gone, young people like Tinko are adopting the latest fashions, hairstyles and music tastes. I like uh, r and okay. I prefer r and While the generals are trading military uniforms for politician suits, the young are also changing the way they dress. Suddenly the young people of Myanmar are much freer to express themselves through music, through dancing and through art. And they're loving every minute of it. And across town, the market is suddenly pulsing to a new rhythm. It's Zorlat's heavy metal. There's much more freedom now. It's getting much better. There's more freedom to write and play whatever we want. Dan Rivers, CNN, Myanmar. As the civil war in Syria grounds on and the death toll rises, many people have left everything behind in a desperate search for safety. CNN's Fred Pleitgen has this report from the capital, Damascus. While the streets in central Damascus are fairly quiet, fierce fighting in the capital suburbs can be heard and seen throughout the day. This woman tells us her name is Jamila. She says her house in Aleppo was destroyed during the battles there. She fled to the relative safety of Damascus with her two children, one only a month old. But now she sees the violence closing in on her again. We are afraid. Sometimes I want to take all my things and sleep outside in the park because it is safer than being indoors. Jamila says she depends mostly on handouts from private people to get by. The UN estimates that around 2 million Syrians have been internally displaced because of the ongoing conflict, and many of those who remain in the government-controlled part of the country try to make it to this part of the capital. That's where we meet Raida, who left her husband behind in the suburbs of Damascus when fierce fighting broke out, and he hasn't been heard from since. Now she has to support four children on her own. I am not the only one whose life has been destroyed or whose husband is missing. Everyone in this country has a missing person or a destroyed home or is displaced. Many, many have gone through this. We have been through so much. We have suffered and have come to hate life because of all these problems. We wanted to show you one of the places where people like Raida are staying. Syrian government agents prevented us from doing so. There are many internally displaced people here in this area of Damascus, and most of them stay in the lowest cost hotels they can somehow afford. We tried going into some of these hotels and talking to these people, but most of them were afraid, which is also due to the fact that there's a heavy presence of plainclothes security forces that are shadowing us. We went into one hotel, and it took only two minutes for two officers to show up and say we had to stop working, even though we have a permission to film in all of Damascus. We can't go into the hotels. When we ask for an explanation, the undercover agent says we need an additional permission to film in hotels, and then he disappears. Meanwhile, the shelling and clashes in the suburbs of Damascus continue, leaving more and more people fleeing for areas they hope are safer, at least for a while. Fred Plaitkin, CNN, Damascus. From that report on Syria, we now join Father Jesse for a look at sports. Father. Thank you very much, Esther. Thousands of jubilant football fans have celebrated in Mali's capital following the Eagles' qualification to the last four of the African Nations Cup tournament in South Africa. In Ouagadougou, Burkina Faso, the capital's famous choir was the scene of celebrations as the Paul put in Spurs talons booked their place in the semi-finals. Elsewhere in Ivory Coast, furious elephant fans made their feelings known as they reflect on the tournament favorites' exit from the tournament after losing 2-1 to the Super Eagles of Nigeria. We have details in this report. I said, well, congratulations to Mali and Burkina Faso. Yeah, seriously, I was uh, impressed with the Burkina Bay performance because I was least expecting them to make it through, but same. Uh, they did well. Yeah, they did. Congratulations. All right. Thank you, Fatou, for that uh, sports. And before we end this edition of the news, a reminder of our headlines. 
the German Foundation for Peace has raised a staggering 5 million dollars a 